That's your cue. Okay, great. Welcome, everybody. We are really going to be learning fundamental concepts today. Um, it's we're going to be learning the we learned some metaphors last week about pleasure. What what drives a person? What drives a soul? Is it pleasure? Is it want? Or is it something else? And it turns out that all three are true. Sometimes it's a pleasure accomplishment. Sometimes it's a want. And sometimes it is something really higher that they can't explain. And today we're going to learn more of the mechanics about that. So let's start reading and let's try and go through as much text as possible. And the lesson from the metaphors from, from everything above. To a person who uses his intuition to understand um, what's going on in heaven. Uh, it's understood. How the essential pleasure of accomplishment which is not connected with it, it's Pashut. It's, 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 it's a pleasure in being. It's in the essence of the unlimited light. Even before the first contraction, and this in other places is called the king having, like playing in himself. <laughs> And it's really unlimited over there. And Atmim, sorry. And also the ten spheres in the essence, which is basically from the crown till the attribute of leadership, which is expression of the unlimited, the insight. Everything is in this pleasure of accomplishment in his essence, Alder Marshall. This is only a metaphor. We don't really understand. Even when we say the word pleasure, that's just a metaphor. What the, what, the meta, what the metaphor is, that even the essence of a soul, the main thing of its um, flicker remaining in this world is pleasure. Vim calls that, so basically, if a person doesn't find pleasure in life, they start to if the soul doesn't find pleasure in life, it starts to leave. And he's saying, nevertheless, the essence of light, uh, of the essence of the unlimited light, is actually even separated from pleasure, even the simple pleasure of just being. God is something much higher than pleasure. It's only that pleasure is a tool to draw it and to reveal it. It's just like the essence of a soul will <clears throat> be drawn towards something that's an accomplishment. That's why we say there's nothing higher than pleasure. There is higher than pleasure. It's the essence. But we say uh, in function, there's nothing higher than pleasure because it causes the soul to function. The essential desire to bestow kindness, it's, there's a pleasure in that. And then it starts to shine with much more light. And then the, this desire to bestow kindness even gets moved to something separate. Or seemingly separate, and and that is the pleasure and want which precedes everything, which powers everything. And now, like we explained before, Shachat symptom that happens after the contraction, the basically the pleasure to bestow kindness moves God to become a source of the chain-like involvement of the creation of the world, which in general has four parts. 
Abia Atsilus Bria Tirinasia. We've said this many times. Actually, this 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 four worlds. Actually, Yerel Vinimshach Vesim Akel, and then the pleasure and the want moves the light to the end of everything. For Gamba Prata Esosphere Sayesa Achrin Shabbatilus, it moves the energy even to the last detail of the ten spheres in Atsilus Al Darch Marshall Canal, like we've said before. But Eini Hanimsa Lekiim Lekiim Midas and Itzuch Lekai Gavna, like for example. Well, there's a pleasure that keeps a person's desire to win alive. Vikai Gavan and similar things. And that's why it says in the tree of life of Prochaim Vital that the higher worlds, which were refers to pleasure, higher days, sorry, Atakemin, Varachanpim and the long faces, which which refers to want. He says, they represent pleasure and want. They're really one thing. There is no not one without the other. The misgalfin, sorry. They're called three heads, the misgalfin. Galif is from the Lashon of to make hieroglyphics. So in other words, they change places. One second, what does it say there? Da logav min da. One is basically there's three heads, and sometimes one is in front of the other. Logav is in front, in, is inside. Lapam is epnimi. No, 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 three heads. Just imagine three heads on, on two on each shoulder. And sometimes who's who's the the drive? It's the middle head, but they they shim is golf and they they change around. Sometimes this one is, is motivating the person, sometimes that one is motivating the person. So we can't be um, reductionistic to, oh, it's only after pleasure. That's not true. Sometimes it's one. Sometimes, so why is three heads? Because again, the three heads, the Miss Galvin, three heads that some, some this one motivates, sometimes that one motivates, is because. Sometimes it's pleasure, sometimes it's want, and sometimes it's nida. It's just something from the essence, something from the ain't safe. The person feels something higher, and that's what's driving them. Um, I know Freud had a thing called um, unmasking, and Viktor Frankl called it dehumanization. Because we're reduction, we can't reduce somebody just to pleasure. Even though when we're now speaking about the the divine soul, the realm of what Viktor Frankl would be speaking about. So there's some, like Viktor Frankl says, um, in every moment a person has the freedom choice to act in the most honorable way. What is the most honorable way? Well, look into your heart. It's one of these heads, basically. What of these heads will tell you what is the most honorable thing you could do right now, even in a difficult situation? Like he used to say, even, he was in four camps, four concentration camps. Even then, he had tremendous freedom. He had a freedom of what he wanted to, to think. He was free to think. And he, was, he had, a, there were aspects which he was free to do. There was things he was free to do. Like he wouldn't swap numbers, bribe the capo and swap the numbers and somebody else should, should go into a knife shit, knife shit, knife, night shift, which had a two week uh, mortality rate. Somebody worked in a night shift in, in Auschwitz, it would only survive for two weeks. So a person could bribe the capo to exchange their number with somebody else, but then they're condemning the other person. So one of the honorable things that Viktor Frankl decided to do is he's not going to do any of that. He still survived. Anyway, so let's go back inside. Mulubish called Sphira Vesphira Beprat. Now this, um, these these three heads are inside every single Sphira. Beprat Beprat is in in each part. Shemil Biladoi En Lakim Klal without the 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 want or the pleasure or or the, the third head, they, they, they would not be activated at all. 
Baruchas, like we explained at length, Vagam who makif es kulam. Also, the pleasure basically surrounds the the, the emotion because it's the motivator. The commercial cost of makmach and mashal yud chafiris ze Like the metaphor of ten. Um, so this is pretty cute metaphor. Heads, three uh, three headed man, and a metaphor of ten holes in the ground, one after another. When you fill them up with water, the first one moves into all of them. In other words, the water that goes into the first one flow ends up flowing from all of them. It is the it is the power source. This is what it says in the Zayra. God made a big vessel. And he called it the vessel of, of in, insight, of wisdom. Which is a source of all wisdom. It's also written in another place, in Pasach right? Afik Yutikunin, he took out two um, fixers. Yutikunin, you mean Tentikunin? Tentikunin, yeah, Tentikunin. What do you mean fixers? It's like jewelry. A person, the jewelry. It's was it the the suit makes the man or the man makes the suit. So these it's basically like jewelry. It it the man makes these jewelries. That theoretically it's the suit that makes the man, but it's really the man makes the suit. So these are tikkunim refer, would refer to ten uh, fixers, like things that make a person look better. And he called them yutzfiras, ten spheres. They're basically ten tools which express the person. Now, this is something really famous, so really pay attention to this. The question is always, when does infinity end and the creation start? So he says, well, it depends how you look at things. But generally, if you look at the, the, the entire picture, they, 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 they disconnect the days, the pleasure, is considered part of the world of the infinite, of God. Because we're not really focusing on the vessel, Edain. The fish Oilam Ha'in Saif, Nechshav Ad Bechinas Malchus, Vadam Kadme. Nechshav, because the, uh, the infinite world is considered till the expression of the first man. Why? Because the first man is really, <laughs> it's, it's the idea of God coming up with the character in his mind. So it's really unlimited. That is basically the letters and the, the end vision, the end action, which went up in his thoughts and his original want. And this is basically the, the, the last level of the essence, and it becomes the driver for the for, for pleasure, which is, means the disconnected days. Because what this differentiates one day from another, it's different emotions. What happens is that it becomes the revelation of the deep sense of accomplishment and the want which existed in the essence of God. Therefore, therefore, since it's a revelation of what's before, so therefore, at the game, the disconnected days, even the intellect, the inside, chachma, bina, comprehension, emotions inside it, it's considered part of the end of infinity. However, the long faces. That's already the vessel, right? 
Shubichin is Gilei Aratzin, that's the revelation of what he wants. Sheba Machmas Ainag, which is power because of the pleasure. Liyesa Nimsha Choba, Mispashet Lamata, to go and to be drawn and to spread out below. Hu Anikra Resh Visharish Anetzalim. He's the head and the root of all the emotions of God, which will, which will be set up from him. Which are the ten spheres of Atzilus, the Chlal in general of a plot, and also in specifically, so in general and specifically. And that's why when we say a crown, the crown is always in, an interface and intermediary. It is the Kesa, the crown, is the end of the what we call the revelation, of the, the, the idea of the essence, and it's the head of that which will be emanated from the essence. Because what are the lights that are um, shine out? It's basically the revelation of what was hidden. However, they are separated from the essence. They, they're considered from like a different domain in a way. Based, like we said right at the beginning of studying this in the 12th chapter. For example, the emotions of kindness and strictness, in other words, and it's not flight and fight. This is chesed means you're going towards something, or means you go away from something. Love and fear. The dover nivdal of something which seemingly is separate. This power to be able to move towards something you like and, and move away from something you dislike, that comes from this power in the essence. But in the essence, there's no, there's nothing to move from. It's only one. So there's no story. So this is created in order to make a story. The the pleasure and the want that comes from the essence, whom that pleasure is actually enclosed inside everything. We as human tummy, it makes them exist all the time. Think of a hand inside a puppet. So the pleasure at the is like the hand inside the puppet. Because this pleasure and this want is really in the it's rooted in the essence of the unlimited light. Shenikrash, the infinite night. Shenikrash, Shua Melech Bats Musa, which is called the king playing inside himself. Kamoshol, Kamoshol and Nefesh, Shenimshach Achra Ainik. Like the metaphor that we see souls move after pleasure. Shemizeh, Raya. This is a proof, Shainik Mamala Aira. It's a proof that pleasure fills its light. In Cain, that's, that's also specific pleasures in any detail. That's the main thing which keeps it going. Till expression, leadership, which the idea of leadership is the idea of being higher. If there wasn't a pleasure in it, a person wouldn't do it, right? A person wouldn't take on leadership position. There's some high inner box of the soul which gets ticked. And it wouldn't exist without that. If you lack the pleasure, then their existence disappears. Let's answer the question right now, because now we're going to go into something very interesting, but let's answer the question right now. I think you mentioned the three heads are one pleasure, two, one, and three being from the essence. What is the difference yeah. between pleasure and want? Want, there is no pleasure. You just want it, even if it hurts you. It can be dry. I just want it because this can be got done. Uh -huh. Could be even the person will not get pleasure, but it still needs to be done. 
and the pleasure in it will actually come after the want. So that's when the want is the head. Like the guys in Mexico, they, they he runs a um, he runs a um, recycling team that they they go every day to the dumpsters and they I think they collect out recycled objects or something like that. I don't remember the details. He basically gives a speech to all these team members and he gets them all excited and he creates a pleasure out of nothing. And that's because they want he wants to do it. So it creates a pleasure. And everybody gets like all riled up and they do that job, which seemingly is not the most exciting job in the world. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's go. And all of this is when we're looking at the entire picture. If we look at the details, right? Details are very important. In Iraq, only the three heads of Atikemin are considered part of the essence. But the seven lower parts of Mulubish Begalgalta, Darchanpin, are actually enclosed in the skull of big faces. Now we're really doing metaphor over here. So the three heads in this case is speaking about Kesser, the crown, Chachma, insight, Bina, comprehension. That's it. They, are, if we're looking at the parts, they are considered part of the infinite, and the seven lower parts are considered already being drawn into. They're, they're interfaced with the Arachanpin, with the long faces. Now, a face obviously has a skull. The skull is like a rock. It's made out of calcium, just like the pavement. And it is a metaphor for a flintstone that you bang on a flintstone and a spark comes out. So what happens every moment a God, soul sees everything that a person will potentially accomplish in their life. And all this accomplishment bangs on the skull. And then the skull gives out a spark. And the spark, this old metaphor, and the spark goes to the liquid around the brain and lights it on, gives it energy. And then the liquid around the brain gives energy to the brain and the brain sends an electrical message to the heart to beat and every single time the accomplishments bang on the skull as a result from that the heart beats you notice kids have a much faster heartbeat they feel like they have much more to accomplish but they have more time and as we go on in time I believe there's like one heartbeat per, there's some math how the heartbeat slows down year by year. And so we say the chesed that came in, the kindness from the pleasure from the disconnected day is begalgalta is connected with the skull is in, is enclosed into the skull. Gvura bamechastima, and the gvura, the strictness, the second emotion from atikemim, is enclosed in the mechastima, the hidden brain, which is the liquid around the brain. Just learn this. Just learn this. Just say this again. Chesed atikemim begalgalta, gvura bamechastima. Say it again. Chesed atikemim begalgalta, gvura bamechastima. You need to, like you need to remember this. It's a very important concept, but, but it has meaning, so it makes, makes it easier. There's two functions that a person has. There's when a person is in total happiness. For example, they have a personal, like uh, marrying off a child, 
what's activated at that point is the kindness of Atik Yemen is activated in the skull. And the skull is like a person's essence. And everything is good and he's, a, he's able to, to forgive um, people that irritated him because it doesn't matter. Because when the kindness of Atik Yemen is activated in the, in the skull, everything is good. And people can do bad things, they can do tshuva, you can do, you could, a person did, they missed, messed up, they can go back to God at that level, and God will say, we'll work it out. But everyday living, it has to be, the second emotion, which is focus, strictness, is in the liquid around the brain, and, and everyday life, Gvura's idea, I want this, I don't want this. No, I don't want it like this. I want it exactly like this. No, I don't want it like that. So it's strict. But a person knows what they want. And that's what powers the hidden brain. And that is the essence of Torah. Like, like what is the idea of Torah? The Torah is God saying, I like things that you do like this, and I don't like it like that. I don't like it when people steal. I don't like it when people murder. I don't like it when people I, uh, I do idolatry. I don't like these things. That's gvura, that's why we say, from the mouth of the gvura. Because he's being very specific on what he wants and what he doesn't want. But now, if you messed up and you want to fix things up, then you have to go to a higher level, higher than Torah, and say, God, I want to, I want to get to the chesed level. I'm, I just want to rectify all those things. And like on a wedding day, a person is happy, and they will, you know, they're happy and they'll forgive people. And so God will get into that mode of chesed, the atigemi. Vezeu, and this is the meaning, which of these famous words that we've been repeating a few times in the in the prayers that we say right before the Shema prayer every morning, God is higher than the days of the world. Now, even a child understands these words, God is higher, he's beyond the days of the world. But now you're learning this, you understand the hidden meaning. You understand that God is higher even than these seven emotions which are enclosed in the Galgalta. He's something even higher than that. So he can not only ask him to rectify you know, things that have been missing in our conduct, but he's totally higher than that. He can totally change the future history. like it's known, I saw a question, I'm going to answer it soon. It looks like a good question. It was very, in, in, very good. Yes, key, his avus ikararotzen minatainu, because the main creation of want is actually powered by pleasure. Shurak mebechinas amides shibatainu. However, it's only the emotions in the pleasure that power the want, because emotions get people to move. So wanting is like movement. For example, the kindness in the pleasure of the Rechmoshul, using a metaphor, he's giving the metaphor. When a person's in a state of pleasure, the happiness of the marriage of his son, and similar things, then he's going to give a lot of kindness to everybody. Because of his pleasure, which lifts up his spirit, as we explain. So he's not in the Gvura mode, he's in the Chesed mode. And people can actually get from him to want all sorts of things. He can actually change his want. Sheldin from judgment, the the kindness. This, this depends on the point of wanting, which is even higher 
Then they hear the reason because the reasons don't matter over here. See, in other words, the reason behind the want divides it up into what you want to go towards and gvura what you're going to go away from. Chesed v'nim, kindness and judgment. But if we get to higher than the reason, so it doesn't matter anymore and person can over, over, overcome their, their emotions. And this is a good way. I'm showing you an example of how the kindness of the disconnected days is enclosed in the skull. And strictness, which is the judgment, the is the opposite. To be, be judging anybody to do something displeasurable, enclosed in the hidden brain, the archantim of the long faces, which is the liquid around the brain, which the 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 um, liquid around the brain is the hidden reason why you want this and you want that. The hidden the hidden reason which powers going towards and going away. Basically what it does, the, 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 that strictness is to be careful, be, be accurate, be accurate in the want, should be specifically in this way, so yeah, so yeah, so kindness and strictness is powered by pleasure, depends which level, so in this level, of it's, it's I have a kindness in this way, and, and strict in that way, because I want this, and I don't want that, and behind that is pleasure, like it says in the original uh, books of Kabbalah, they they spoke about insight, really insight as an aspect of judgment. Why? It's a brain. Because you know what you want and what you don't want. And what you don't want, you, you judge that. Because when want is powered by a um, insight, intellectual insight, but the dictum, then it comes in a very accurate way, but it's in a very focused um, way. This way and not that way. Kindness and compassion are not the same thing. Kind, uh, com kind uh, compassion is a mixture of both emotions of, of kindness and strictness. So there is kindness inside compassion. The kind will be kind to everybody. The compassion will be only compassionate to those that deserve compassion. The commercial cost of Sefer Kabbalah, Harishenim. Just and like it says in the Rotten Ba, Alpi Hiv, Ahokma Ba, Bedicto, the tips of Kahulikah, Mimkain Alpi, Mishpat Atera. And therefore, it will be according to the judgment of Torah, the rise of Mahmayla, because Torah comes from Hashem's divine insight. And the Yeshdinim Rabbim, there's going to be a lot of judgment. When we act, it's not the case when we activate the 13 attributes of mercy, which is compassion, right? 13 attributes of mercy or compassion, which is even higher than the insight in the want. And then God will lift up the sin. God can lift up the sin. In other words, he can make the sin, lift it up to something that actually ends up, the end of the story is positive. Because a person became much better than they would have other ways been. So he can and lift up sin. One second, please, Avon. Because Masha Kosov, Mechina's Kimulration, that they gave him, she built him as Lubish Ben Natalim. And this is what we wrote that the three heads of the Atikimim are not enclosed in the creations, not, not the creations, but the, what the emanates from him, Fubachina's Hining, which is the, the pleasure commercial Baratme, the way it is in himself, should die in Linda Lodman Rotten Cloud before it gave birth, it gives birth to any want. 
and just later on, all one will come from it. And three heads of Atigemim is considered part of the essence of the essential pleasure, which is general Tanugim, which is the source of all pleasure. In other words, anytime you have pleasure in, in anything in this world, it really it's, it's really it's an experience of God, right? You just have to make sure that it's according to his rules. So Shabbat Musayim which is in the essence of, of his life, is We're going, to, we're going to finish off Kameshikosov and then we're going to answer the question. Kameshikosov Keimcha Mekarchaim says, With you is the source of life. What do you mean, the source of life? Because Makakala Tanugim, the pleasure of all, the source of all pleasures is with him because the pleasure is actually what brings life. Shibarotsa Nakodim in the, in the original want. Venikra Atika Datikin. By the way, the first pleasure after Timson, we call it Atika Datikin. The attic of all attics. When we look in the bigger picture, Nikra Ata came in, and when it when it's expressed, revealed, it's called the higher days. It's actually says in the in the Tanakh, the prophet Daniel, that he came in Yosef, the old old days sits down. So Atik is a Lashon in Hebrew, means zikna, old. Like Arik means old. Shehu bechinas nitzchi, basically means it's forever. That's why we're going to say, call it old. The Atmos are in safe, the essence of the unlimited light. Keshaba, Umeir, Lamata, when it comes and shines below, Bishbalshos, the Kavachud, when it comes down into the ruler and string. But in the essence itself, who in the essence himself, in other words, before Simpson, we, can you say there's a oldness in front of God? It's a creation. The idea of, yeah, of, of being old is, a, is a, actually something that's made up by God. This whole concept explained in a different place. When we say the words void, there's some way, somebody explained it to me once, I don't remember it now, how when we say the words, Hero Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one, one in Hebrew is Echad. And then we say quietly, Baruch Shem Kavid Machusel And the last word is void. And there's some way of interchanging um, letters, because certain letters are more related to others, that ends up that void is, is, is a code for Echad. Forever and ever is a code for oneness. Pashut. So we're gonna go. We're gonna. So we're gonna get to all these questions. Which is the, which is the simple, um, the oneness in the essence of the unlimited, uh, infinite light. Which is higher than the time, even from the older days. And by the way, when the older day, when the higher the time shines into time. Time also becomes forever. Isn't that interesting? I don't know what that means, but it gets time gets a stamp. The time stamp gets to be everlasting. It takes on the it takes on the characteristics of the everlasting God. And then it's called Atikemin, the old days, because it's now days, emotions are now being powered. Time is being powered by the end. By the essence, by the infinite essence. Let, let's do the questions. Okay. It sounds like you're using the word head for kindness. Is that somehow related to the term chassid? Are the two related somehow? You mean chassid? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Chassid. So, so chassid means kindness and chassid is somebody who's kind, the E refers to God, the small little dot, because God is like a point. So he's being kind to God. So chassid is kind to God. In other words, 
not only fulfills his laws like a good little boy, but he actually wants to fulfill the mission of what God intends. You know, like you're in a classroom and the teacher makes rules and I just want rules in order that I should get candies and get points. Or a person's more mature, <coughs> the teacher so much, they say, you know what, I want this class to be like, like you want. I'm not just going to do whatever is necessary for the points. I'm going to do, do the best I can. So I'm going to be kind to the creator. That's a chassid. A person who goes beyond the laws. Well, he needs to know the laws to be able to go beyond that. But he goes beyond the laws in order to fulfill the commander's intent because he's kind to God. Okay. Um, I observe that sometimes we are aware of the underlying pleasure and sometimes we are not. What covers over the awareness of pleasure if we are not aware of it? <coughs> sometimes it's better when you're not aware of it. It's more there, more there because when a kid's having fun, when they, when they don't, when they don't know that they're having fun, like Viktor Frankl says, uh, it's called paradoxic intent. When you want something. Don't focus on it, focus on something else and it's gonna happen. So when you become aware of the pleasure, if you focus on it, so that, that makes the pleasure, could make the pleasure fleet, you know, fleet. And could be when you're not aware of the pleasure, there is a pleasure there. What are the 13 attributes of mercy? So it's, it's, it's basically when they, in the Bible, when the Jews did the golden calf, so what happened? It was, it was actually the Egyptians. The Egyptians were strong. There's there some. There's millions of Egyptians that left together with the Jews, and when they didn't see Moses for forty days, they miscalculated and they thought he's not coming back. So the Egyptians pushed the Jews, and they said. Uh, you know, you need a new leader, a new intermediary. Let's use the cow, right? Which is perhaps even valid to an, to an extent in the fact that um, it is one of the signs of the zodiac. So, so basically, what happened is that the um, that the Egyptian sign of the zodiac, the energy basically goes through the stars. Imagine for yourself, there's a, a person who creates pots and he puts a piece of clay and he spins the pot and he uses his finger to shape the pot as it's moving around. So God uses the stars and the 12 constellations to like shoot beam energy onto the world and it mi mixes up reality, mixes up the atoms in the, in the fire, water, air and earth to create the world and to create time. And we say, God, the, the, the stars don't have freedom of choice. And he, he just basically like, like God decides how, how the energy, the effect of the energy they move around mathematically. It's like the spinning car just spins, but the person's fingers shape the, the earthenware. That's what it says in the Zaya, how the world works. And it happens to be different constellations are dominant in different areas of the world. So in Egypt, the, what the dominant constellation was the, the one of the sheep. And the Egyptians recognize that that's where the energy comes from. The only mis the mistake that they made is they didn't realize that the, sheep, the constellation doesn't have free choice. So God doesn't want us to thank, thank it because it's really God using that constellation. When, they, when, they, when the Egyptians, when, they, when the Yid and the Jews left Egypt, the, um, the, and this happened, Moses disappeared for 40 days and they thought he's not coming back. Confusion. Um, so the Egyptians said, you know, which, which, who was more powerful? Who's the next constellation after the sheep? It's the cow. 
it was the cow constellation is more powerful than the sheep. And that's what took you out of Egypt. As in, a, as in a bull, you mean? Like the shore? Yeah, yeah, the bull. The bull. The mistake was is that the bull doesn't have freedom of choice. The energy comes through it, but it's there's a there's a pu puppeteer, a master puppeteer that uses all of these tools. You don't thank the tool. You don't thank the axe. You thank uh, you thank the wood chopper. So anyway, when they did that, that was a big problem because, because they committed to the oneness of Hashem, the oneness of God. And now, 40 days later, after giving them the Torah, you have these people that are behaving in ways which is totally opposite of the entire creation because they're, they're giving honor to the cow. They shouldn't give an honor to, to one of the tools of God. You have to give honor to the original source. He doesn't want us to give honor to the, to the stars. So, or the constellations or the, or the angels behind them, right? Um, so, this was a big problem because it goes against the Torah. So now, that would bring um, destruction. So, God, when he taught the 13 attributes of mercy, to say the 13 attributes, to evoke the 13 attributes of mercy, Moses said to God, let the, let the wicked, if they're wicked, let them die. Like, they let them be destroyed. And God said, you're going to need it in the future. You're going to need to evoke the 13 attributes of mercy. So when this happened, this was a problem that it was going to become, bring destruction to the entire Jewish people on that level of energy. And Moses knew I need to evoke the 13 attributes of mercy to go to a deeper level inside God. So we just learned, which is, it's, it's another, it's a steps up, right? So we, we had, we have Gvura, is Mechastima, they're on that level. And if you stay on that level, it's, it's discretion because if you break the rules, you're, you know, the energy comes according to the rules. So basically people hurt themselves by breaking the rules. But he doesn't want the Jewish people to be destroyed. So he votes the 13 attributes of mercy at the higher level, which is even higher than the head. The, uh, it would be from the, from the crown. I believe it would be the, from the crown of the, of the Atikamen, from the first three. And when they're evoked, then God looks at things from a higher, bigger picture, and he will pass over his negative energy, which they created by seemingly serving the cow. So um, what are these 13 attributes of mercy? They are, are actually in every, every but there's a liquid around the brain functions in 13 ways. So there are six, there are six, six, and one in the middle. And the first six of the as for the attributes of mercy are more from the kindness side, and the last six of the attribute of mercy are from the strictness side. So six, and the middle one, the seventh one, is like the truth in the middle. And when we evoke the first six of the attributes of mercy, so a person gets into a mode of of um, pleasure, just the pleasure of life. And things don't matter. Things that used to bother don't bother anymore. There's a bigger, there's a bigger vision, there's a bigger picture, there's a bigger purpose. The last six from the strict side actually are also merciful because they they allow a person to have cognitive thought. So the eighth one, it's basically filtered, strictness idea of filtering things through. So there's like a little pipe, little pipe inside or like filter in the, in the membrane around the brain that allows um, a, uh, a targeted area of the brain to receive the liquid. That's why it's from the strict side, because there's a target area. And that allows a person to have insight. Whenever it seeps through, a person goes, aha, 
as the Eureka moment. The Eureka moments, all Eureka moments come from one of the attributes, the eighth attribute of mercy, of the 13 attributes of mercy. And uh, detailed thinking, comprehension, detailed comprehension requires a very extremely targeted area of the brain to get this liquid and no more. So that is the 13th of the attributes of mercy is the most targeted, the most strict, but it is liquid that goes, seeps through the brain and, and empowers our ability to have detailed comprehension and detailed thinking. So we're experiencing the 13 attributes of mercy all the time. So Moses, by evoking them, was like going deeper in himself and, and in the Jew, in the Yid and the Jews that they should come to a level where you can fix fix things up. You can make amends. So yeah, I hope that helps. It helps? Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Rabbi Chirik. Let's stop this recording. Say a few words about the Parsha.